Welcome to MMA FanCast. My name is Luke Payson. Welcome back to everyone who's already a subscriber to the channel. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe so you can see more great interviews, including the one coming at you right now. First time guest on the show, about ready to, about a little under a month away from April 19th, Sprawl in the Berg 3 for 247 Fighting Championship. Very excited to welcome to the show, Jonathan Kaufman. Jonathan, welcome. Luke, thanks for having me. Always great to have you. Love the American uh, pride you're showing with the flag behind you. Before we get to what's going to be an incredible back-to-back doubleheader event, which is Sprawl in the Berg 3, which you're a part of, and Brawl in the Berg 21, that's cage, grappling, submission only, and then followed up the next night by regular old MMA, both amateur and pro, um, at Hollywood Casino at the Meadows. Just an incredible venue, incredible fight. Set up. Let's talk about what got you into jujitsu in the first place. Give me your history and, and kind of uh, your journey in jujitsu before we get to the actual match. So I started jujitsu when I was 14 in uh, 2005. I think it was around October. And um, I just started at my uncle's Taekwondo school. We didn't really do ranking or anything. We just strictly stuck to nogi. We did uh, just anything we could learn from people who were stopping in or YouTube videos or UFC fights at the time. We didn't really have like a real structured system or anything. Um, after a couple of years of that, I ended up starting out in my first tournament in the Kumite Classic, which was run by uh, Bill Viola. Um, only the OGs were really know too much about the Kumite anymore. I but um, yeah. uh, it's, it's old now, but it was awesome when it happened. Um, from there, I ended up switching to another gym. We started doing more structured jujitsu there, and then I just kind of hopped around the entire area. Um, I'm I think almost every gym in the area I've been to at least once. And um, right now, my home is at Gracie Allegiance in Greensburg at the mall, and uh, I heavily cross train at uh, Tommy Costas High Ground. So much respect for him having me and for Rebecca teaching me. Well, that's great on the background. It also shows one of the cool aspects of mixed martial arts or jujitsu is you can kind of learn in sort of an unstructured way if people are willing to learn from YouTube or other people. And then, of course, become more structured as you find the gym. Talk a little bit about the tournaments, uh, tournament experience you've had, uh, other um, other super fights you've done. Like what has your um, – competitive career been like do you have a running number in your mind as far as wins and losses i know some jiu-jitsu people keep track of that some don't because it's much more of like a a learning process so give us a little bit about your competitive history um like i said i started in 2005 so that was long before smooth comp was even fabricated or an idea or anything so we just we had the paper brackets and we went in there and just hoped for the best and waited for eight or nine hours to compete and then we finally got our shot um, I don't have any running numbers as far as grappling matches. I have nine amateur MMA fights. So I have a little bit of cage work knowledge, and I'm hoping that that kind of carries me with this. But um, super fight-wise, I've done the veteran Bushido showdown, or throwdown, I'm sorry, for uh, Jarek Fry. If anyone wants to support veterans, I highly recommend looking into that. Just reach out to Jarek, and he'll tell you how to donate. Um I've done fight to win twice. Um, I've done a few small super fights here and there. And uh, I've traveled to a lot of local tournaments, Nagas, Grappling Industries, um, the Kumite Classic. I can't even remember all of them anymore. But there's been a lot. Well, that is really good. I appreciate you sharing about your competitive background. Really cool that you already have nine amateur MMA fights in a cage. So the follow-up question would that be, what advantage do you think that gives you? Because there is a jiu-jitsu learning curve where a lot of jiu-jitsu practitioners, maybe now they're learning to do wall work and stuff or cage work, but most don't. So what level of technical advantage do you think that gives you? And then let's talk about your opponent, Cameron Kyle. What are your thoughts on him? Do you know his style? Or is it really just about going in there and doing the best? Because a lot of tournaments in jiu-jitsu, you don't know anything about your opponent. And you're just getting in. One advantage of the super fight model is that it's more like an MMA fight to to the fact that it's it's just one 
per night. You're matched up weeks or maybe a month in advance. So talk talk about your uh, confidence coming to this one. And then, of course, your opponent, Cameron Kyle, out of Railroad City Jiu-Jitsu. So um, Cameron Kyle, I honestly don't know too much about, and I'm not looking into it too much either. I think I've met his brother, Sean Kyle, once or twice. And if I recall correctly, he seems like a pretty stand-up guy. Um, I'm really hoping the uh, cage control or the cage walking and uh, the knowledge of experience in the cage will help with the uh, a lot of the cage work. And then other than that, I just let my jiu-jitsu do its thing, and I just ch- hang out and watch while it works. Um, uh, as far as what I know about him, like I said, I don't know anything. My game plan, same as I've always told my buddies anytime we go to a tournament, it's just to end it in two minutes and go home happy and uh, call it a day, punch in, punch out, go home. So that's that's great feedback on your opponent. A lot of jiu-jitsu is kind of like that. You can kind of figure it out as you're in there because it's a very adjustable art where you're reacting and um, and also offense, defense blends together. What are your thoughts on this being a submission only match? Uh, how confident are you to be able to get a submission? People that don't know if it if it ends without a submission in, in time, they don't. To my knowledge, uh, they haven't done a sudden death. That, that, that's not something that's structured. It just becomes a decision of uh, like a referee or somebody. They might be adding more of a judge panel Previously, um, it's been uh, a referee, just a one one person judge. So what is and and people still certainly win decisions. I mean that's not a bad thing, uh, but it's not a point like uh, Naga has very much of, of like a point spread where you can kind of rack them up like in wrestling. That's not how this is. So it's much more submission focused. So what's your confidence level coming in that your game is very much a sub friendly game? Um, my game is definitely more sub-based. Uh, usually wrestlers are more of the ones who are the point-based type of submission fighter. Whereas like my game is kind of more, I just hunt for the submissions the entire time. Unfortunately, that has led me to lot, lose a lot of points tournaments because I'm too busy hunting submissions and I never cared about the position. And, um, unfortunately that has led to a lot of losses. The, uh, the sudden death, I've done a lot of those and while they're fun, Unfortunately, it kind of goes back to the wrestlers having the advantage because a lot of sudden deaths, if if it's a takedown, they get the takedown out of the gate and we're done. But I have seen a lot of submission people still come back and win some sudden deaths. So it would be cool to see a sudden death. But either way, like I said, I'm hoping to try and end it in two minutes and punch out. So. Well, that that sounds great. That's a great prediction. It's I'm already excited because 247 puts on incredible shows. The back-to-back style has been done now. This will be the third time of doubleheader events, which is why this is Sprawl the Berg 3. And um, the other two back-to-back events worked out incredibly well. And then one of the fights, they even had uh, matches in uh, on an MMA night, but this is a separate just jiu-jitsu night. It's been really great having you on. Uh, I'm going to try to get as many of the submission-only grappling uh, competitors on uh, because doubleheaders means there's a lot going on. But can't wait to see you. For people that want to get tickets, 247fighting.com. Make sure you put Jonathan Kaufman name to get credit. If you're going to be in person, now's the time to buy tickets. If you're too far away, the pay-per-view, best way to do it is to go to your smartphone and download 247 Live app. 247 Fighting Championships actually has its own app, which is pretty fantastic. You can buy the pay-per-view in the app, or you can even go ahead and subscribe for a year subscription, which will give you every pay-per-view for the entire year, plus the entire catalog of MMA and jiu-jitsu uh, that's been done. I've really appreciated you being on the show. Can't wait to see you live in action April 19th at the Hollywood Casino at the Meadows for 247 Fighting Championships. Sprawl on the Berg 3, Jonathan Kaufman has been the special guest. Luke Pace on MMA FanCast. Thanks so much for coming on. Thanks, Luke. You got it.